Hi, I'm Danielle. I'm Tara Lee. And I'm going to teach you how to sew a mask to wear out in public. So Tara Lee, have you ever sewn before? Probably a couple of decades ago. So it's safe to say this is a little more than a refresher course. Yes. Just talk to me like I've never done it. Perfect. <laughs> well, the first thing is to know your sewing machine and tools. The easy one is the scissors. The slightly harder but still very easy one is the sewing machine. So the first thing we need to do is thread our machine and bobbin. And yes, you need both all the time. So this machine makes it really easy. Your machine at home will probably look very similar to this. This is just a basic singer. This one numbers the parts to thread it. So we're going to take our thread and go one, two, three. All right, so then four, five through the eye. Then we're going to go to six, which is this. We're going to loop it in there. And then there is another little ledge right there that we're going to floss it through. That helps it feed into the needle straight. And then I'm just going to cut some of that excess off and make my goofy face while I try to thread <laughs> it. Through the eye of the needle, front to back. You did it. <laughs> I've done this a few times. Nice. Now. And then the bobbin, which we also need all the time. So you just load the bobbin in, if you have a front or a top loader on your machine, to your directions. This makes it a little easier. It tells you what to do. It goes counterclockwise. underneath the little ledge right here and out. Now I'm going to hold on to the tail of the thread from the top thread and I'm going to use the manual dial right here to turn the needle down. Okay. That's going to pick the bobbin thread up. Oh, okay. So that it brings it up top. And so a little loop that. there. That's how it goes in, in the fabric and stays in place. Gotcha. What we just saw there. So then we'll put the cover back on. And then the other part of the machine you need to know is your tension. Three is a good uh, average tension setting for cotton fabric that's doubled up. Uh, if you had like chenille, something very thick, you would want a different tension. If you had silk, something very thin, you would want a different tension. So okay. um, three is the middle of the road, that's so just three. average. And then you've got your stitch, which is a straight stitch. And then um, the pedal is one of the most important parts. It makes it go. It's just like a gas pedal in your car. If you press down really, really hard, you're going to go really, really fast, and it's going to be harder to control. If you barely, barely press down at all, it's going to make a, a whiny noise, like it's going to stall out, like you aren't giving it enough gas. Familiar with that. OK. <laughs> and what the, that does is really use these teeth right here to push the fabric along. The important thing okay. to remember is you are not pushing the fabric through the needle you are not pulling it through the needle. The machine actually does that. You're just steering. So I'm just guiding it through. You're pushing the gas to go okay. and you're driving the steering wheel. And it always go, the cloth is always gonna go in that direction. Yes. Okay. And if you manually turn the uh, pedal we, um, dial, mm -hmm. you just turn it towards yourself. And this is the reverse button and we're gonna use that a few times too. Okay. And now we need our pattern. So a uh, face mask pattern is very simple. It is just a six inch by nine inch rectangle. And I've gone ahead and measured this six inches by nine inches and cut it out on just a piece of cardboard, something simple. So we're gonna lay it on top of some fabric and cut it out to size, which we have right here. So what kind of fabric do you need for the masks? We are just using simple cotton, and cotton is best because you can still breathe through it, and it's uh, easy to sew and easily accessible. You could cut up an old sewing, uh, in a, an old pillowcase if you wanted to. Okay. As long as mom says it's okay. Uh, so then we need elastic, and we have half inch black elastic right here, which is a little uncomfortable on the ears, so I actually cut it down the middle uh, it'll fray just a little bit, but nothing too bad, so that I can get quarter inch, which is better. It's kind of hard to find right now. Just everybody's making masks, so you just work with whatever yeah. you got. And then you just have two pieces for each mask. And what we're going to do 
is we take our two square our rectangles that we've cut out and we're going to have the outside of the fabric inside out. So we're going to put them together like that. And you'll notice I have two different patterns. Mm -hmm. uh, that makes it easier to know which side goes next to your face and which side goes outside. Oh, okay. That makes so sense. So you don't take it off and put it back on wrong and undo the purpose of wearing it. So you're going to put those together. And it's not perfect. It doesn't have to be. You're going to sew a straight line. It's not going to be right on the edge. You're going to have some hem. So it's okay if it's a little crooked. Okay. And then we're going to sew. So we're going to take the two pieces that we cut out in that nine by six pattern. So this is the top side, the right side. This is the wrong side or inside. So we're going to put them right side together. Okay. So if you want to just line them up nice okay. and neatly, right side together. And then we're going to have our two pieces of elastic, which have been right. cut to six inches long. Okay. They're both six inches. If you are sewing a mask for uh, somebody who has a pretty big head, like maybe a really tall dude, you can go seven inches. If you're sewing a mask for your kid and their head is pretty small because they're only like six, you're going to want to just cut an inch off of your pattern all around and make the elastic only five inches. Okay. So an inch all, all around, around or just, okay. All so right. instead of nine by six, you'd make it eight by five. Gotcha. Okay. That easy. That easy to adjust. So I'm going to get my thread tail ready. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start in the middle and sew here. We're going to sew all the way around, but leave an opening where we started so that we can flip it right side out. And when we get to the corners, we're going to be laying our elastic into the corners. Okay. That's really it. So we're going to get our fabric under the presser foot and move it down towards the middle. And we're going to put the presser foot down. We always have the presser foot down when we sew. Okay. Holds it will it go crazy. Okay. It holds it flat and it allows the teeth to do their job of pushing the fabric right. forward. Yes. Gotcha. If it's not pressed against the teeth, it won't move the way you want it to. So the other thing to remember is that when we first start sewing, that tail of thread, mm -hmm. which is nice and long, is going to get pulled in before you start to go out. So you don't want a short little tail that stops here or else it'll unthread the needle. Okay. You need a long tail so that you can kind of... So the edge of the foot is going to go to the edge of the fabric when you're starting. There's measures on the machine mm -hmm. and we've got it right about at the 10 mark um, on the machine. So there's about a quarter of an inch. Okay. On the overhang. So we're going to go forward just a little bit. And then we want to knot the end so that it doesn't come apart. This is where the reverse button comes in. Okay. We're going to hold the reverse button down and press down on the gas pedal for just as much as we went forward. That makes a knot that won't come undone. I see. Okay. When you're first starting, you can use the turn dial. And even when you have the reverse button down and you're going backwards, you still turn the dial towards you. All right. Because the machine does the job of making it go the other way. Just like when you put your car in reverse. That makes sense. So I'm going to sew down to about this tomato, and then I'm going to stop <laughs> so that I can put the elastic where I need it to be. So I'm not pushing or pulling. I'm guiding. And I've got my hands on either side so I can guide along. And then I'm going to stop right about here. My needle is not down all the way, but I need it to be in the fabric. Okay. The reason why is when I lift up the presser foot to place the elastic in, I don't want to lose my spot and the needle beam through the fabric holds uh, it in place. Okay. So I'm going to lift up my presser foot now. And I'm going to just lift the top piece and then lay the elastic diagonally flat inside. And now I want it to be up just a little bit from the corner because I need room to turn that corner and I want the same amount of room on the outside all around. Oh, okay. If I have my elastic over here and I stop before I really get to it and turn, it's not going to stay in the corner. It's just going to come right out. Right. It's okay if that happens. Just afterwards, you just sew it down. Okay. 
So presser foot back down before I go. I always put the presser foot down before I go. Now I've gone through the elastic. I'm gonna manually put the needle down. And now I want to go this way. Okay. The machine doesn't go that way. No, it doesn't. So <laughs> I need to turn the fabric. I've got the needle in the fabric so that I can just spin it and it's not gonna lose my spot. The thread's not gonna change ah. its tension. Everything's gonna be fine. I can turn that 90 degrees. And then I put the presser foot back down. Okay. Now, when I get to about here, I need to stop so that I can pull the elastic into the corner. But I want right. to start with it pulled away so that I don't sew it right. down because I need it to go over that my That won't work. <laughs> Correct. So now we're just going to sew down. That's a good stopping point. I'm going to do the same thing I did before. Lift the presser foot. Open it up and bring the elastic down. And I'm trying to make sure that I didn't twist, twist it. It. Uh, it doesn't matter. It would just irritate me. Understand. <laughs> and I've got enough room so that I can go through the elastic and have the same uh, hemming. To turn it again. Yeah. Gotcha. Thank you. go. Now, I'm not going to turn it yet. Okay. Do you know why? The needle's the needle, still up. Yes. <laughs> I got to turn the needle down. Okay. When you're first sewing, and even after you've been doing it for a while, if you find you stop and the needle's up, you mm -hmm. can just manually put it where you need it to be. Okay. If you go too far, uh, you can reverse a few steps if you haven't gone way too far. But let's say I meant to stop here and I kept going. I'm just going to reverse, reverse it. and go back. And then I just have a really good knot at that end too. No okay. This is super easy and not necessarily the fancy finest way of doing it. It's just the way of getting it done so we can all have masks to wear. That's the important thing. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to press down on my pedal and I am not driving like I'm on the interstate. I'm driving like I'm through a neighborhood so that I can stay straight. That's driving like you're on the interstate. <laughs> so now I need to do the same the thing elastic. over here with the okay. elastic. And you'll notice that as I get around, more of it's sewn, so it's a little bit harder to line the elastic up. That's okay. Take your time. I'm going to lift up the presser foot. Turn 90 degrees. Now, when I go to line the elastic up here, because I've sewn half here, mm -hmm. it's going to be a little harder. I'm going to stop a little sooner so that I have room. Gotcha. Stop right there. Because I need a little more room because I can't lift it up all the way. Press your foot is down. Now you might think, what happens if you don't move your hand? <laughs> I have a fairly good idea. <laughs> Actually, nothing, because the presser foot's going to stop. It me. will stop you. Yeah. Okay. You don't have to be scared. You'd have to hold your hand up and in the way. That would but be if you a... actually just have it on the fabric and forget to let go or stop or drive a little too fast, the presser foot will stop it. Okay. Needles are sharp. Don't try to put your finger underneath. Use the guides. That is excellent advice. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Now I'm going to turn it one last time. And I need to leave an opening to turn the fabric right side out over here. So right. I'm just going to sew down to this tomato. Okay. There we go. 
Now I want to do the same thing I did at the beginning and back stitch, meaning sew backwards over where I've sewn forwards right. so that it creates a good binding knot. This is the easy way to knot the ends. Just like that. Okay. Very easy. So now we can gently pull our fabric out and cut the thread. And cut this thread too from where we started. And now for the big reveal. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> Like turning a sock inside out. <laughs> or pantyhose. Yeah. <laughs> ah, wow. Now we have our rectangle. That is cool. With elastic straps. Now, let's say you didn't line the elastic up in the corner very well and it came out. When you flipped it inside out, one side wasn't connected mm -hmm. at all. Just fold it over the end and go back and oh, sew it. Just sew it on the outside. It's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're not walking the runways of Milan with these. <laughs> We're just trying to go to not Target. Not this year, anyway. <gasps> so. Now we need to make the pleats so that it can stretch over our face but fit over our ears ni nicely and right. that also creates um, more ventilation barriers. Oh, okay. That's what it's for. Mm-hmm. Just dual purpose. So this is going to be pretty easy. We will iron this down flat so that it's nice and crisp. Do you have elastic squadron out? Go. Oh, that's pretty. All right. So we've ironed it nice and smooth so we have mm -hmm. nice crisp surface. And this is where the opening that we turned it inside out, right side out is okay so that's nice and ironed together it'll be easy to sew that closed mm -hmm. now we need to put our three pleats in so i'm gonna get two you can hand me two pins the long ones with the little the little flaggies bits. on them yes those are nice because i need long straight pins okay so there's one and two and you know needles are sharp so i've been told <laughs> so you're careful so this is the super scientific, precise, and yellow way of doing things. You kind of pinch right here. Okay. You can you can be super scientific and smart and measure it and things like that, yeah. but <laughs> who needs that? You're just gonna pinch it. So about a third of the way down. You're gonna make three of these. Okay. So yeah, you want to do each one and a third. All right. So there's your first one. And then we're gonna pinch again, and we're gonna try to pinch at the same level at both sides. If you like to be really, really exact, you can measure and mark where you're going to pinch. There's two. And we're going to pinch a third time. Okay. Now, we're going to pin this because it wants to come undone, right? So we're going to put a straight pin through each one two, three, fiddle behave, pleats. Through the top pleat, through the middle pleat, through the bottom pleat, and then through the fabric to hold it in place. Okay. And now we're just going to do the exact same thing on this side. Pin through each pleat. Now you'll notice I'm not right on the ends. Because now that I've got my pin tuck pleats, and like if you have skirts that are pleated, that's literally it. That's it. That's all there is oh, okay. to it. We're going to sew all the way around the whole thing, which will close that end there and hold those pleats in place. Oh, okay. Now, pins are sharp and they're metal, so we do not want to sew over the straight pins. It will snap the needle. That'd be bad. 
So we're just going to make sure that we move them out of the way when we get there. Okay. So now we're going to line up, and I'm not on the pin, I'm next to it, on the perimeter. Press your foot always down. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to manually start this because it's a little thicker than it was before. Right. And I'm going to make sure my tail of thread doesn't get messed up. So one, two, three, and one, two, three gives me a nice finished knot. And because it is a little thicker here, I'm going to press down a little bit harder on my pedal. going up a hill. Yep. Okay. Then, just like before, needle down, mm -hmm. presser foot can come up so you can turn the corner. But before I put the presser foot down, I'm going to ease that needle out of the way. Okay. Because it is sewn over the pin tucks now. So now I'm going to sew all the way down, and this is going to be in my way, so I'm going to stop before I get to the pin. go a little slow here because I don't want to go off the edge. Alright, I'm going to stop there, get my needle down because I'm going to tease that out just enough to be out of my way but still hold my pleats closed. Gotcha. And then I'm going to keep sewing until I get to the end. There we go. And my needle's already down, so I can lift my presser foot up and turn. And now I'm just going to make sure that my pin that's holding my pleats in place mm -hmm. is still in the right spot. And this part's the only really tricky part. You don't want the presser foot to put your folds Push it up. Yeah. over. So we're just going to go slow and stop and put them back under the presser foot if we need to. Okay. Stop there. I'm going to lift the presser foot up. I'm going to straighten that fold mm -hmm. out a little where the presser foot was pulling it up. All the way to the end and then turn again and okay. now I can take this needle right. out and then I'm gonna sew along to the end and I'm not pushing or pulling the fabric I'm just guiding I'm going to back stitch so that it knots the end so it doesn't knot. And lift up. Tease that out. And then I can cut off my excess thread. And now we have a mask. Look at that. <laughs> 